We want to welcome you this morning to Sunday morning service. Let's stand, shall we, and open up the service in prayer. I'm excited about what God has in store for us today in the house of God. Amen. Precious Heavenly Father, we approach the throne of grace today with thankful hearts. Lord, we're looking up. Lord, we're looking to heaven. Father, we pray that that heavenly vision today would be strong. Lord, that our ears would be open to hear your voice. That we would tune in to your wavelength, your frequency. Father, that we would hear the voice of the Spirit calling us, preparing us for what you have in store. Now, Lord, we're looking to you. And Father, we're, we're, we're just looking forward to spending some time with you here in the house of God today. May this be a time of uplift. May this be a time of healing. May this be a time of blessing. May this be a time of challenge. May this be a time where you speak into our lives. And Father, if you find anything in us that needs to be transformed, that needs to be changed, we pray that you would put your, your hand upon it. Bring it to our attention, Lord, so that we can know you, so that we can serve you, so that we can be the people of God today. And Father, we'll give you the thanks and the praise, for we pray this in Jesus' name, that name that's above every other name. And Father, right now, we bow the knee to you. We bow our hearts to you, Lord, and we look to you, and we're ready to worship you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Light of the world, you step down. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
tread down our enemy will sing and shout the victory for me. 
Lord the praise today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's on the throne. He's on the throne today. He's King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Praise God. He's here among us today. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. God is so good. Amen. I just feel the presence of the Spirit of God in the house of God today. Amen. He is worthy to be worshipped and to be praised because of all, not only what he's done, but because of who he is. Amen. Amen. He is the Lord of glory. Praise the name of the Lord. Hey, would you take out your prayer concerns if you have your bulletin this morning? All of those that we're praying for, that we're believing God for, that we're standing on the promises of God for. We believe that with God, nothing is too hard. Amen. We believe that God, sometimes, uh, you know, it seems dark. Sometimes it seems hopeless. Sometimes it seems like, like uh, there's no answer. But with, when God comes into the picture, when, when he's a part of the equation, that changes everything. Amen. Amen. Because you never know what the Lord will do. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we just lay our hands right now on the needs of the body of Christ. Those who are hurting, those who are suffering, those who are, are feeling pain or sickness or disease or any kind of attack of the enemy, any kind of spirit of confusion or doubt or despair. Lord, we just come against the darkness that's in this world. And we stand firm on the promises of God. We believe, Lord, that you are the Lord, that you are our creator, you're our redeemer, and you sit on the throne today. We worship you as our God who is able to do above and beyond all we could ask or think. And Father, we pray that you would release miracles, that you would release signs and wonders, that you would work mightily on behalf of those that put their trust in you. Lord, may we see healing, may we see blessing, may we see the favor of God, the favor of heaven resting upon your people today as we are here to seek you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your miracles. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your presence in the midst of your people in the house of God. We give you the praise in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hey, before you're seated, could you make eye contact with somebody and, and just, just pray over them right now where you are. Amen. Just pray for your brother, your sister, whoever the Lord brings to your attention right now. Father, I pray for my brother, my sister. I pray, Lord, we pray for one another today that the mighty power of God would be released. And Lord, that the light would shine from heaven that we would, we would see the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We well, want to welcome you to Sunday morning service today. Uh, today is, is Palm Sunday, and we will be having communion at the conclusion of the service. So we have our, um, our communion that's pre-prepared, uh, and every, it's on at uh, all of the entrances. If you haven't uh, got yours yet at some point in the service, just slip back and grab one of those as we, be, as we prepare. And... Um, I know the people on Facebook Live are, are sharing communion with us today. And uh, today I want to tell you, we we've e even have uh, Billy from, uh, from Louisiana, a friend of Brian and, and Kim's that is joining us in taking communion today. Amen. And this is a real victory of what God is doing in this, young, in this man's life down there in Louisiana. So, Billy, if you're watching by Facebook Live today all the way from Louisiana, we're looking forward to sharing communion with you today. And for everybody who's uh, not here in person, but you are part of the body of Christ and you, you believe in Jesus and you, and you want the power of God, the presence of the Lord to be in your life, we're believing, God, that today will be a day of great uplift and encouragement as we share this time together. Amen. Hey, on a scale of 1 to 10, how many have had uh, at least a 7.5 this last week? All right. Fantastic. Praise God. Praise God. That's awesome. Um, we're looking forward to, of course, next Sunday is Easter Sunday. Hey, I just want to just ask you, 
Uh, can you think of somebody? I'd like to challenge everybody to think of a neighbor or a family member or a friend that you could call on the phone or maybe drop by and pay a visit and invite them to come with you to church next Sunday. Isn't that a great idea? Amen. That just popped into my mind here. And I thought, that's got to be God. You know, it's got to be, that's a great idea. Think about somebody who, if you're not sure if they're going to church anywhere on Easter Sunday, they might just be waiting for you to give them an invitation. Wouldn't that be awesome? And, uh, you know, they tell us, and uh, they, they've got to be correct on this. I'm not sure who they are, but I have heard they, they do say that if you're going to get anybody to come with you to church, that the best time, the most uh, successful uh, Sunday of, of the whole year would be Easter Sunday. All right? So turn to your neighbor and smile at them and say, yeah, it makes sense to me. Because uh, Easter Sunday, people want to go to church. And you never know, you never know that that might start a new direction in life. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You know what? Uh, uh, whenever I go to the house of the Lord on Sunday morning, or whether it's Wednesday night or for special occasion, it always adds value to my life. Amen. And I, I tell you what, just being here to be with all you folks today that have come out to uh, share this service today, it lifts me up and encourages me. So I want to say thank you for being here today. Praise God. And we're, we are looking forward to Easter Sunday. It's going to be an awesome, awesome day. And uh, the resurrection of Jesus is for real. Amen. Can I get a witness on that today? I say it's for real. He is alive. He is alive, and he is coming back again. Amen. 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 Now, uh, you know, I, the past uh, month or so, past several Sundays, I've been preaching a series of messages on faith, and we've been using the, the faith chapter in Hebrews chapter 11. And um, I tried every angle I could think of to, uh, to connect uh, this series of messages with Palm Sunday, and I just felt the Lord leading me a different direction. So we're not giving up on our series of messages on faith because uh, in living in today's world, we need a strong faith. Amen? And uh, so I want to keep feeding that message, the message of, of uh, faith that pleases God and a faith that pursues God. Uh, so we're not giving up on that. We're just going to come back to that possibly next Sunday, Easter Sunday. But today... Palm Sunday, I've just had God's been speaking to me in, uh, in a different, uh, in a different uh, uh, direction, and um, uh, I want to share some thoughts with you today, being that it is Palm Sunday, and uh, that sometimes it's called Passion Sunday, and uh, this is such a, a very, such an important uh, uh, time that we're commemorating today, when Jesus made his entrance into Jerusalem, um, for the last time in his earthly life and presented himself to uh, the people as, uh, as the king. A lot of the songs we sang today were about uh, Jesus as the king. And uh, that was on purpose because I believe that that is the message of Palm Sunday. He came in to present himself as the king and uh, he was rejected. And uh, they just didn't see it. They didn't want to see it. Uh, the power brokers uh, in the city there, they turned the, the, the people, they turned the mob against Jesus, led to his crucifixion, led to his suffering. And that was a great tragedy when you look at it in, in a human uh, way. But uh, when you, when you look, step back and look at the plan of God and how, how God planned uh, for Jesus to come, and uh, he knew that he would be rejected uh, as the ruler as the sovereign of uh, every, every person's life, that he would, he would be uh, uh, discarded or, or dis, disrespected. Uh, that was a part of the plan of God so that, uh, so that he could pay the price as the sacrificial lamb. One of the songs we sang today was about uh, giving praise to the lamb who sits on the throne, amen, amen. And uh, that, that's a part of the, the person of Jesus is that he, he came as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin 
of the world. So um, anyway, if you would open your Bibles with me today to the book of Revelation, chapter 19. I'd like to share a message with you this morning entitled, The King is Coming. The King is Coming. And we're looking at Revelation chapter 19 and beginning in verse 11. <laughs> and I'd like to invite you to stand with me today as we read the Word of God. We'll read verse 11 through 16. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this word. Thank you, Father, for the vision that you gave to the Apostle John, that we see Jesus today as our coming king. We see Jesus as, as, as the one who will present himself the second time in power and glory and authority. And, Lord, we know that uh, you, you not only have the solutions for what ails this world today, you are the solution. And we are looking today for your coming, for your return. Thank you, Lord, for your promises. We ask your blessing upon your word as it goes forth today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. amen. Before you're seated, could you smile at three people and uh, maybe give them a, a little nod or something and, and uh, make eye contact with somebody there? Yeah, wave at them and praise God. Amen. If you were in church Wednesday or if you uh, were on Facebook Live and watched the Wednesday service, um, this, this thought that uh, the Lord uh, uh, gave to me about the two presentations of Jesus as king has been working in my mind. It's been working in my heart, and that's why we're taking a deviation from uh, our series of messages on faith because of it being Palm Sunday and uh, <clears throat> Palm Sunday being the, the, the day uh, when Jesus entered into Jerusalem for the last time of his earthly life. And uh, it, was, it was a dramatic uh, entry uh, into Jerusalem. Uh, the, the, there was a crowd of people that uh, were very enthusiastic. And it says that they, they uh, took their, uh, their outer garments and laid them down and uh, Jesus was riding on the donkey, uh, coming into Jerusalem, presenting himself as, as king. And uh, they cut down the, the branches of the palm tree and, and they strewed, him, strewed them uh, on his path. And, and, uh, and so he entered in a very dramatic way into the city of Jerusalem. And uh, while, while uh, the common people were very excited about it and very uh, very glad to receive him, uh, he, he got a different reaction altogether from, uh, uh, from the, the uh, people in charge of the, of the city there. Um, now this, uh, this uh, triumphal entry is what it's called, is something that was a, a fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. Because in the book of Zechariah, the Old Testament prophet, in chapter 9, verse 9, he says this, um, O daughter of Zion, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, your king is coming to you. He's just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. And so when Jesus came into Jerusalem, there uh, it was at the preparation of the Passover, 
that he wanted to celebrate with the disciples before his suffering. Um, he, he, he fulfilled that prophecy that had been given hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And then uh, uh, Wednesday night I was uh, sharing with the folks who were here for the Bible study that uh, when Jesus was arrested and uh, he was brought before Pontius Pilate, the governor uh, of the land. And, uh, and there in John chapter 21, it tells about that exchange between uh, Pontius Pilate and the people and, and Jesus as he presented uh, Jesus to the people. Um, there were seven references in John chapter 21 to Jesus as the king. And so he presents Jesus to the people and says, what, shall I crucify your king? And, and seven, there were seven times when uh, Jesus was, was referred to as, as the king. There in John chapter, um, chapter 19, actually, it was. Uh, and so he was, ex he was accepted by the people, but he was rejected by the rulers because the rulers stirred, stirred up the crowd and it became a mob, and they began to cry out, crucify him, crucify him. And uh, so he, he was, Jesus was not the state-approved Messiah. He had the support of the, of the common people, but he did not have the support of the authorities. And they stirred up the crowd against him. They called for his crucifixion. He was rejected by, by the rulers. And this in itself was a fulfillment of prophecy because if you go to Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 7, there the scripture says that he was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. And then in verse 3 of Isaiah chapter 53, it says that he was despised. He was rejected uh, by mankind. He was a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him in low esteem. And so here Jesus comes into Jerusalem for the last time. He presents himself as the king, and, uh, and the common people welcomed him, and they, they were it was kind of like a parade, and it was uh, an exciting time. But there were others who had power, and they despised Jesus. They were envious of him, of him. They were jealous of him, of his popularity with the people. And so they plotted and devised a plan to get rid of him. And they despised him in his heart. And this is what, what John says in John chapter 1, verse 11, where it says that he came to his own, and his own received him not. Palm Sunday is all about the, the presentation of Jesus as the, as the promised king, as the messianic king, and him being rejected by this world to be king over this world. And so you might say the first, this first presentation was a big flop. It was a big failure. But that's not the end of the story. It was all a part of the plan of God that, he, that this rejection should lead him to the cross, should lead him to becoming that sacrificial lamb that takes away the sin of the world. And actually, the first presentation of Jesus turned out to be prophetic of a future Coronation, And that's what I want to talk about this morning because what we remember on Palm Sunday is the prelude to the main event, to a day that is yet off in the future when the Lord himself will present himself the second time as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the outcome will be entirely different on that second time. We read about that in Revelation chapter 9, 19, uh, when uh, there, when the armies of the world under the leadership, under the influence of the Antichrist are gathered together at a place called Armageddon in the last days, in the last days of time, the last days of this age. 
and in their fury and in their demonic uh, opposition to anything that, that comes from God, they come against Jerusalem to destroy the people of God. And the Bible tells us that at that moment that the heavens will open and Jesus himself will come back to this world and he'll be wearing that sash across his front that says King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Now just look at the contrast between the first and the second presentation of Jesus as the King. The, the first time he came humbly riding on a donkey. Uh, a donkey is not necessarily a beast that a king would normally ride on. But we see him coming the second time for the second presentation and he's riding a white horse and, he, and the armies of heaven are following him. We see him coming the first time as the suffering savior. He's coming to pay the price of sin on the cross. He's coming to give his life as a ransom for many. But when he comes the second time, he comes as the conquering warrior king. But the first time he came wearing a crown of thorns, which symbolized the persecution and the rejection of him as their king. They did not want him to rule over them. But the second time, the scripture says that he will be wearing many crowns. Hallelujah. The first time he came to an old rugged cross, but the second time he comes to establish his millennial kingdom. Amen. The first time he came as the prince of peace, but the second time he comes to make war. The first time he, come, he came to be judged, but the second time he would come to execute judgment. The contrast between the two presentations of Jesus as the king, the first time he came in weakness, but the second time he comes in power and authority. The first time he came as the sacrificial lamb, but the next time he comes, he'll come as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. The first time he came as king of the Jews, but the next time he'll come as king of kings and lord of lords. So the title of my message this morning is The King is Coming. I want to draw your attention this morning to the promise of the word of God that ultimately one day he will rule and reign over this old beat up sin cursed world. Amen. And here's the message of the hour. The King is Coming. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Would you turn and smile at your neighbor and tell him, hey, cheer up. The king is coming. Amen. Right now it may look dark. It may look like the world is in chaos. It may look like the world is in decline. It may look like the world is, is going, slipping into the fire of hell. But, but the king is coming. And at the, at the appro appropriate time, uh, when, when the king returns, everything changes. Amen. You know, when, uh, uh, right now, this is the beginning of what we call Holy Week or Passion Week, when we remember uh, the suffering of Jesus. We remember him being rejected by man. Uh, but uh, we also remember that he was approved by God. Amen. As he hung on the cross there, um, the skies grew dark and the light of the sun was blotted out. And, and yet, as he made his, the ultimate sacrifice of his own life, spilling his own blood, he had the approval of God. Rejected by man, but approved by God. Amen. Now you tell me what's more important, to be, to be approved by man or to be approved by God? Amen. Amen. Praise God. You think about Holy Week which would be from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday and all the events, all the events that happened that last week. Uh, so much in Scripture is a description of the, of the uh, rejection of Jesus as the Savior, rejection of Jesus as the King, 
his suffering and the way he was treated unjustly and unfairly, and it was not right. But he, there he was. We see him in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's praying to the Heavenly Father and saying, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But then he says, not my will, but your will be done. And then comes one of his own followers, one of his own disciples. Judas comes in with a, with a, a small army of soldiers. And, uh, and they take Jesus there. He's betrayed by uh, somebody that he had always treated as a friend, as a follower, as one of his own disciples. Judas became the betrayer and handed him over to the authorities there. And then he went to be tried uh, by the Jewish Sanhedrin, and that was uh, done in the middle of the night uh, so that it could be done uh, w without the scrutiny of the public. So the decision would be made before anybody knew what was going on. And, and then um, he goes to Pontius Pilate, and uh, the, the authorities stir up the crowd, and and they call for him to be crucified, and they lead him out to the cross, and, and there Jesus hangs on the cross, and uh, the sun uh, goes dark, and, uh, and there's a great earthquake, and, the, and the, the, the veil of the temple is torn in two from top to bottom, and the, the, the dramatic effects of, the, uh, of, of this uh, holy week, this week of suffering, this week of rejection, that leads to the, the death of Jesus is followed three days later by the glorious resurrection. Hey, that's why I'm looking forward to next Sunday because that's a good part. Amen. When we talk about the resurrection, Amen. we serve a Savior who's alive today. Amen. Praise Amen. God. He's for real today. And so we have the resurrection and then you read the scriptures and the resurrected Lord was with his disciples for 40 days and then uh, after that appointed time, he ascends to heaven to where he sits at the right hand of the Father even today as our great high priest. And you see, all of this is leading up to one glorious great event, and that is the second presentation of Jesus as the king. Amen. That's what's coming at the conclusion of the story. Amen. Where he returns as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The scripture says in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 30, and then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. Then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. Amen. You see, today as we share communion, as we celebrate the Lord's Supper, it's First of all, it's a, it's a time, a moment in time to look back and to think about the suffering of Jesus, to think about the sacrifice that he made and the price that was paid for sin when he died on the cross. So we, it's a time to look backward. And the scripture says that we should do it in remembrance of him. We remember what Jesus did. But it's also a time to look forward Amen. because the very next verse there in verse 26 says, says, often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Amen. And every time we share communion, it is a reminder that Jesus is coming back again. Amen. It's a reminder to us that the king is coming. Amen. Amen. Now, we understand that the return of, of the king is in two phases. First, there's the rapture, and then there's the return. With the rapture, he comes silently, secretly, to catch away his bride. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we always be with the Lord. But then the second phase of his return is when he comes with the armies of heaven, riding the white horse to fight the battle against the Antichrist at Armageddon. And that is the return of Christ. So we're not, we're not necessarily emphasizing the, the rapture of the church, although I just wanted to remind you that, uh, that, that the scripture teaches that uh, the day is coming when the trumpet will sound 
And uh, the dead in Christ will rise first, and we who are alive and remain will be included in that great day when we meet the Lord in the air. And that's the promise of God. Uh, but uh, this, his triumphal return is, first of all, a triumph over the Antichrist. Let's talk about the Antichrist for just a moment this morning. Because we're living in a time in our world today where we can see the world becoming more and more under the influence of something. De there's something demonic going on in the world today. When you see all of the craziness and all of the corruption and all of the all of the stuff that's happening in our world and how our, our nation is being led down a path of, uh, of immorality and, and confusion and, and irresponsibility. And uh, you just have to uh, realize that uh, there's, some, there's a power, there's a principle at work in the world today. It's manifested through man. It's manifested through government. But behind the scenes, there is a demonic power in the world today to, to cause things to become reality that, that uh, a few years ago you would have thought that would never happen, where they would promote these kind of policies, where, where uh, a man could go into women's bathrooms and uh, women's showers and where they, th there's a, a move or a push to make these things uh, uh, enshrine them in law. Uh, whoever thought that that people would think this way, or that, or that uh, uh, that you can change your gender and become somebody that you were not created by God to be. Where do these things come from? From the mind of man, or is there there a darker, more sinister power at work in the world today? Is there the spirit of darkness, a demonic power to bring to bring confusion and to bring and to bring uh, all, all kinds of harm? to the human race. Um, there's, there's something demonic about what, what's happening, and the scripture tells us that when the Antichrist comes on the scene, that he will be a man of sin. He will be a man who is empowered by the devil. He will be a man who is possessed by the devil, and all the manifestation of the prince of darkness will, be, will be, uh, become an illustration through the Antichrist as he operates in the world for a short season of time. But the scripture tells us in Revelation chapter 19, verse 19 to 21, John says, I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and the armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. And then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in this presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. So first of all, the second presentation of Jesus as the king will result in triumph over the Antichrist. Triumph over the power that that energizes the Antichrist. He will be cast into the pit. He will, be, he will be thrown along with the false prophet into a place of confinement. And then secondly, the presentation of Jesus at Armageddon as king of kings and lord of lords will be a triumph over Satan himself. Because listen to what the scripture says in Revelation chapter 20, the first three verses. There it says, I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and he bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. Hey, I'm in favor of that. The Bible says that the devil himself, that when Jesus comes back, 
at his second presentation as king of kings and lord of lords, he will lay hold on that old serpent, that old dragon, the devil, and he will be thrown into that pit and he'll be confined there for a thousand years so he'll not be able to deceive the nations any longer. Amen. Now this, this triumphal return of Jesus will also be a, a triumph over sin. The world we live in today is filled with sin. It's filled with rebellion against God. But you know, when Jesus comes, things are going to be different. Amen. First of all, when you think about it, who is the tempter? Well, it's the devil. And the devil today goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he might devour. He comes to see who he, how he can steal, kill, and destroy. But we just read in the Bible where it tells us that when Jesus comes that he's going to be locked up and put away. And so there will be no tempter. Now, now people who live on the earth will still have a human, nation, human nature. But you can, imagine, can you imagine how much better the world will be if the devil is not able to go about and do his dirty work? Because he's the deceiver. He's the tempter. He's the destroyer. His influence over this world will be removed. And it'll last for a thousand years. And that means it's going to be a huge victory over sin. Because even though there will be human beings living on the earth, there will not be that demonic activity. That will be greatly curtailed during that time. Now this will also be this will also be a triumph over su over suffering when the king returns. Today, sad to say in this world there's so much suffering. You hear on the news, you read in the newspapers, on the computer, you get all of the things that are happening in this world about these senseless acts of violence. Where just people just go go into a building and they start shooting randomly at whoever. They're angry. They're being driven by the spirit of darkness somehow. There's, there's um, you know, just something is not right there. And, and people are, people are uh, 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 seeing all of these tragedies that uh, take place in the world, the, all of the violence. By the way, uh, I don't think the answer is to, is to cancel the Second Amendment. Amen? Amen? Because guns do not kill people. People kill people. Amen? Amen? That may not be the politically correct thing to say, but it's the spirit of this age that destroys, that we see in this world. There's going to be, it's going to be a triumph over suffering. There will be a new world order that, that the, the king of kings the Lord of Lords will bring when he arrives. At his second presentation, things are going to change. The ground rules are going to change. There will be, and you know, you hear a lot about the new world order and how there's, there's powers in our world, uh, lead, world leaders that want to bring about the, the end of uh, nations. The end, they want it to be one world government, and that's, you, that's where it's headed. And uh, that's, uh, we read about that in the Bible, the rise of the Antichrist and the consolidation of power in the world. That's, that's the direction it's headed right now. But the scripture tells us that, uh, that when Jesus comes, uh, there will be a different kind of a new world order. Power will be consolidated, but not, uh, not under wicked, uh, sinful, uh, devil-driven uh, mankind, a uh, power will be consolidated uh, under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the scripture says that he will rule with a rod of iron. And it'll be a, an era of righteousness. It'll be a, a time when uh, you'll be able to, uh, to live safely and securely where you won't even have to lock your doors at night. And all of the violence and all of the theft and all of the murder and all of the perversion that's in the world will be a thing of the past because Jesus will be in charge 
and he will rule with a rod of iron and righteousness will be enforced on the earth for a thousand years. It's called the golden age that is in the future of this world. Now, right now, looking at it in the natural, it doesn't look like it's headed that direction. But when the Lord comes, things are going to change in a big hurry. Amen. Amen. I got a feeling that uh, you, you, you think uh, that our current uh, leader is making a lot of executive orders. Wait till Jesus comes on the scene. Amen. Amen. We're going to see a, a lot more executive orders. Because he will be the authority. We won't have democracy. We'll have theocracy. Woo. Praise God. Praise God. What does the Bible say about it? Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15, it says the kingdoms, the, the seventh angel sounded. There was great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, that's why I'm not, uh, I'm not pessimistic about the future. I'm not discouraged about what I see happening in the world today because I know it's all a part of the direction the world is going. Uh, and it, and, and it, when it looks the darkest, when it looks the most hopeless and uh, in the natural, it seems to be no way that the world is going to be saved or spared. That's the moment that Jesus will come and then everything will be turned right side up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. All the problems of the world that are caused by the sin nature of mankind, all of man's mistakes and inconsistencies and hypocrisies will become totally irrelevant because the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and forever. Amen. Amen. He's got my vote. Amen. I'm voting for Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You know, I get, weariness of, I get weary of the, the craziness and the corruption that's in this world. Um, I don't know how many of you uh, feel this way, that sometimes when you listen to the news, you know, you tune in just to see what's happening in this world. Man, it is so depressing. You see, they, you think, well, uh, they, they've tried everything uh, perverted and, uh, and uh, they, they've tried everything that's totally off the wall and then they try something new. Here's something new that comes that's totally outrageous. And sometimes you feel like, like there's this heavy cloud of despair and darkness and hopelessness that that anything could ever be right in this world. That's why we have to remind ourselves that our, the situation we're in today is only temporary. Amen. Amen. There's a better and a brighter day coming according to the word of God. I'm looking for a better world because the king is coming. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that he is coming. Like the old song says, he's coming soon. Amen. And where, do, where does that leave us? Where does that bring us to the point of decision? Because the big question is, is does he rule and reign in your heart and in your life as your king? Amen. Amen. Have you made him the king of your life today? That's what it's all about. You know, when I've been... I've been thinking about uh, Palm Sunday and, and Jesus presenting himself as, as king to the world and, or to the city of Jerusalem, and then he was rejected, and, and then they, they punished him, and they persecuted him, and they crucified him, and everything went wrong. Everything went uh, into darkness, and uh, that, uh, that was a terrible tragedy, but, but then through the resurrection, he turned it around. And he ascended to heaven. And he, gave, he left the promise, left us with the promise that uh, I'll only be there for a while, but I'm coming back again. We see that in Revelation 19, the second presentation of Jesus when he comes back, followed by the armies of heaven riding the white horse to confront the evil that's in the world and to overturn that evil and to establish his own millennial kingdom. 
He comes back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I'm looking forward to the coming of the King. Amen. You know, that's what gets me up and going every morning. That's where my hope is. My hope is not in human government. My hope is not in, in uh, all of the institutions of man. All of those things, as, as, uh, there, you know, there may be some good in, in uh, the things that man does, but there's a basic corruption in all of it because of sin. But when Jesus comes back again, it'll be a totally different story. And that's where our hope lies as believers in Jesus Christ. It's in the coming of the Lord. That's why the last prayer of the Bible in Revelation chapter 22, I believe verse might be verse 17, the Apostle John says, Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, the Bible says in Philippians that one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess to the glory of God that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, when he comes the second time and presents himself as King of kings and Lord of lords, then yes, every knee will bow. But it'll not be by choice. It'll be by force. Everybody, every enemy of God will have to admit We'll have to surrender. We'll have to kneel before the authority of the sovereign Lord of heaven. But today he gives us the choice to come willingly out of our own hearts and to acknowledge him and recognize him for who he is. He is the Savior of the world. He is the King of glory. And today we can live for him and let him be the King of our lives let him be the king of our home. Let him be the king and the sovereign of our church and our community and our world by living for him and letting his light shine through us. Can we give the Lord a standing ovation this morning? Let's just, let's just stand and recognize Jesus as the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. The king is coming. I said the king is coming. Hallelujah. The king is coming. The Bible says the king is coming. That's where our hope lies. Our hope is not in anything that has to do with the institutions of man. Our hope is in the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to take your communion that you have right there. And if you need to go, grab one of the communions. And as you take that, I want you to answer the question, is Jesus the king of my heart? Is he the king of my life? Does he rule and reign in me? That's what taking communion is all about. It's letting him be your Lord. It's looking back at his suffering on the cross, but it's also looking forward to living under his authority when he comes back in person to present himself for who he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. These things are awful hard to get open, aren't they? Hey, someone said, when are we going to go back to doing it the old way? Soon. Soon. Yeah, the sooner the better. Can I get a witness on that? Amen. amen, amen. Praise God. Let's just pray over this cup and this bread here today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus. Lord, we're, we're saddened that when he came to present himself as king the first time, he was rejected. But it was necessary. It was a part of your plan. But when he comes back the second time, He's going to be accepted. We're ready right now today to accept his lordship. Lord, we're ready right now to accept you as the king of our life. And right now, Lord, we just open our hearts. We ask, Lord, that you would rule and reign in us today. Be our savior, yes, but be our Lord, yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for 
coming the first time and enduring the rejection, going to the cross and paying the price of sin to become our Savior. You came the first time as the lamb, but the second time you're coming as the lion. We take the bread right now in thanks, looking back at what you did for us in Jesus' name. Let's take the bread together. And Heavenly Father, this juice here, this grape juice, reminds us of the blood that was spilled on the cross for our sins so that we can stand before God forgiven, clean. All of our guilt is gone. The power of sin is broken in our lives. We can now live for God. We can live a life of righteousness and truth by the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus. Let's take the cup together. I want you to join me in singing this old Gaither song. The marketplace is empty, no more traffic in the streets. All the builders' tools are silent, no more time to harvest wheat. Busy housewives cease their labors. In the courtroom, no debate. Work on earth is all suspended as the king comes through the gate. Oh, the king is coming. The king is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding. And now his face I see. Oh, the King is coming. The King is coming. Praise God. He's coming for me. Happy faces line the hallways. Those whose lives have been redeemed broken homes that he has mended those from prison he has freed little children and the aged hand in hand <coughs> who were crippled broken ruined clad in garments white as snow oh the king is coming the king is coming I just heard the trumpet sounding and now his face I see oh the king is coming the king is coming praise God he's coming for me can hear the chariots rumble. I can see the marching throng, the flurry of God's trumpets spell the end of sin and wrong. Regal robes are now unfolding. Heaven's grand stands all in place. Heaven's choir is now assembled. Start to sing Amazing Grace. Oh, the King is coming. The King is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding, and now his face I see. Oh, the King is coming. The King is coming. Praise God, he's coming for me. Let's give the Lord the praise today. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. He's on the 
throne today. He's got everything under control. He is in charge today. And he has appointed the time when all of these things will come to pass. The skeptics say, oh, that's just fairy tale. That's just fiction. That's just, that's just religion. That's believing in something that's out of this world. Well, they got that right. It is out of this world because there is another world. And that's the world of God. It's the world of the Spirit. I want to be a part of that world. Amen. How about you? Listen, if you're here this morning, if you'd like to be prayed for, if you'd like to, if, you, if you're facing some kind of a problem or sickness or <clears throat> if you'd like to stand in for somebody not able to be here today, we'd like to invite you to come for the prayer line. Those of you who are on Facebook Live, thank you for joining with us today for church. Looking forward to a Wednesday night and then Easter Sunday again. But if you're here today, if you'd like to be prayed for, or if you're here this morning and if you, maybe if you, you want to accept Jesus as your Savior, we invite you to come right now. We're going to sign off on Facebook and open it up for prayer if anybody has a prayer need today. In Jesus' name, amen. Just come if you'd like prayer this morning. Some of you may want to come and stand with those that are here right now. If you have a need of any kind, you'd like, like for us to agree together in prayer, we just invite you to.